Welcome to Not Your Mother's Mahabharat, the podcast where I tell stories from the ancient Indian epic, the Mahabharata, in a very, very casual way. For each episode, I will be telling the story to my wife, Aja, and to a rotating special guest. My name is Satish Jaraj. I'm a fantasy writer and world builder, and mythology from all over the world has always factored into my creativity. The Mahabharat is a more recent obsession of mine, and I'm excited to bring these stories to you, as well as the deeper themes and ideas that make the Mahabharat the phenomenon that it is. Another thing I and my cohorts love is foul language. So these Mahabharat retellings will probably be unlike other versions you might hear. My goal with this podcast and with using humor is to make these beautiful stories memorable, accessible, and fun. Our guest today is Mindy Mahir, who you'll learn a little more about later in the show. All right, let's get started. This is not your mother's Mahabharata. Beware. It's fucking epic. Hosted by S.P. Jairaj. <laughs> Mindy Me here. If you want to introduce yourself and any, if you have any familiarity with the Mahabharata at all. But let us know who you are. Yes, well, I am um, lucky to count myself as one of your friends and happy to be here as your first guest for the podcast. Um, I am a thriller writer and CPA, uh, happy marriage of two careers, and I uh, I know almost nothing, um, but I'm excited to learn. One, my first degree uh, in college is actually in religious studies, and I came at that not as a religious person necessarily, but out of a curiosity of knowing how different people interpret the world and their their stories and you know what what they see in the world and what they see is their place in the world so um i'm excited thank you for having me i'm like yeah like the religious angle is going to be interesting with this for so the big like thing that about the mahabharata is that one of the chapters is the conversation between krishna and arjuna and that conversation is the Bhagavad Gita, which is the Hindu holy text. Um, so what I'm really like fascinated with this and where it's going to be interesting is that there's all these yogic principles that's hidden, that's deep within the Mahabharata, all these ideas on like meditation. And um, I'm excited to just like to discuss and get into those. And part of that is like why I want to do it this way. Um, yeah. And then... Azure Anderson. Hello, I'm Azure Anderson. <laughs> um, I am actually Satish's wife. Ooh la la. Um, and I <laughs> and I also work for a um, choral organization. So I'm a singer. I'm a artist of multimedia, whatever's lying around, sort of thing. Um, so that's kind of what I do. Um, and as far as my knowledge of this vast book it comes through i'd say satish um i've looked through some of the comic book versions that he's had i've read some of those stories i've walked in on him <laughs> watching movies and videos about it and and gotten sucked in um so i know a few tiny snippets probably hmm. and some things might be familiar Probably once we start talking about them, but I couldn't tell you one of the stories off the top of my head at all right now. So this is very exciting. What do you like about stories? Oh, what do I like about stories? I think what I love the most about stories is how you can craft them. Unlike life, stories can have symmetry. They can have symbolism and you know beauty in places where you would not normally expect it um you know my life doesn't have that and i think that's why i'm drawn to story that's a solid answer that's that's a great it's a great beginning for this Agreed. i'm really happy with that yeah <laughs> yeah how about you me yeah um let's see i think i i like stories because 
they can vary so much. They can be about a tiny minutia little thing that happened to a person, like a very singular thing that happened to a person. Or they can be about a giant epic event that is made up in someone's brain. You know, I think that's why I like stories, because they can be anything you want them to be. Um, or as like as big or as small as you want them to be. Mm-hmm. I don't know. So one thing that I'm excited for about this is that it's going to be uh, with me telling the story and the telling with you guys. It's not going to be the traditional telling. With it being like deep mythology and it being so-called like seven times longer than the Odyssey and the Iliad combined, it's it's daunting. Um, there's so many stories. They all stream after the other. There's, I mean, most in... Most Indians, I would say, know kind of the main idea of the story, but even that comes in, like, so much later as far as, like, who the main actors are. And, I like, I've seen other podcasts of this, and it's mostly, like, audiobooks, and it's just, it's mythology. It's like reading the Iliad and the Odyssey itself. It's like, it can be kind of be hard for some people, and this is, in a sense, seven times harder than that. It goes into all these different things, and so I just wanted to be able to tell it in a way that's relatable, um, tell it in my style, my way. The reason we're going for Not Your Mother's Mahabharat is because there's going to be cussing. Uh, there's going to be a lot of fuck. And especially in this first <laughs> section, it's there's this little part of me, absolutely, that I'm like, okay, this section has a very strange, in a way, hero idea of it, which is awkward as fuck to do with two women. So, oh, great. this is going to be great. Awesome. And like one being my wife, stoked. I'm like... Pretty stoked. <laughs> So there's just, you know, in my sense as well, you know, I'm not sure where I kind of stand religiously, but I do believe, like, there's some magic and power in, if I were to believe in God, it's because of a sense of humor. Like, that's, like, just, like, for there to be, for there to exist a sense of humor, and so, um, yeah, so for my religion for this point is, yeah, a sense of humor. Hmm. Um, And just to be able to share this, um, I'm kind of eager now. I'm ready. You I'm guys ready. ready? Okay. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm opening my notebook because the only thing I took notes of is the the names of some of the characters. Because this will be an infinite list as we kind of go forward. And can I ask, you're probably going to get to this, uh, yeah, no, but can I ask, like, what kind of time periods are we talking about with, with, when this was originally written, or was it an oral tradition originally that was passed down? How many we... authors are we talking about? I just kind of want to wrap my arms around, mm-hmm. like, where and from how we're getting these stories. Okay, well, because that's your first question, we will start with the earlier stories of how that poem came to be. And then, but the third one is the one that's like, this is how the Mahabharata was written. I love an origin story. Okay, the origin of the poet, which goes back to ancestors. So, the first thing to understand in the Mahabharata, and the other thing is like conversational, chatting. Um, one thing that's nice about that origin story of the Mahabharata is that it's, it's kind of two people having a conversation. And again, that's, that's exactly why I want to have, kind of have fun with this. So the first thing to know is you have these people called uh, rishis or sages in like a very casual way of like trying to explain who they are. They're kind of like the Merlins. Mm. They're wandering Merlins. That's what I'm going to say they are. So they have magical powers that they've kind of gained through a lot of hard work. But then also there's this element of them, them being, I think there are like eight magical rishis who were the first people to hear some of the sacred texts in their mind, and that's how they became rishis. I think there are eight that are immortal as well. Um, And yeah, magic powers, a lot of that comes from their meditation practices, yogi, um, yogic stuff, and from, and this is the good one, celibacy. So. Why is that the good one? Yeah, that's that's debatable. That's the theme of so much of this first part. It's... Yeah. Oh, Lisa. There's a lot of stories about semen happening right now. <laughs> There's eight Taoist immortals as well, but nothing about celibacy. Oh, interesting. So, interesting crossover, but I think they have yeah. more fun. 
<laughs> with this being like such an ink I yeah, I can totally see that. I don't know, the magic power thing That's true. So they have magic powers because they hold their semen in. Yes, they do. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Clench it up. Um and so one of the things <laughs> one of the things I researched was this concept. Um and that is part of like certain yogic traditions. Mm-hmm. Um so there are these rishis who are again wandering Again, just wandering wizards, as far as to make it understandable, that is definitely a bastardized way of, call, of referring to them. And then there are nymphs, um, known as Apsaras, uh, who are like kind of water spirits. And so, I mean, so water spirits and fairies. So we have the story starts that we have this nymph named Adrika, so A D R I K A, and Swimming about, and then she sees a Rishi. Rishi's got his foot dangling in the water, and she's she's feeling a little frisky. There's, you know, I just listened to a podcast about fairies, about how ideally they're kind of a little mischievous. Um, so this one is actually super mischievous because being a beautiful, um, yeah, water spirit, mm-hmm. there are, she could have anyone, really. You know, like, we've always heard the mermaid tales. Mm -hmm. Um, So, she senses this Rishi, beautiful water spirit, wants to get it on, floats up to him, and kind of just grabs his ankles a little. Guess what happens? He Uh, kicks her. Falls in the water, they live happily ever after. Kicks her in the face. (laughs) Worse. (gasps) No, what does he do? No, doesn't kill her. Oh, what does he do? So he is in the middle of his meditations. And there are like seven stages of this meditation. Um, again, there's part of it is the, also the celibacy as well. So he's fucking pissed. <laughs> he's really fucking pissed. He's on like the seventh level of it. So he's been working hard to do this. And so he fucking curses her. <laughs> and he's like, I'm going to turn her into a fish. He had uh, his feet in her water. Yeah. Basically Seriously. teasing her. And he turned her into a fish. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. No. Turns her into a fish. Okay. You know, he doesn't have sex in the mind. He's got his celibacy in mind. So, you know. He could have just said, no, thank you. And he could have said, just no, thank you. Away. Right. Well, he does feel bad. Like, after she's like, starts turning into a fish, he's like, what the fuck, man? He feels bad. And so he does, he can't take back the wish. That just cannot happen. But he can alter it. And so he does say, let her know that you will have a child that will be one of the greatest sages of the world. Um, so, you know, you'll be able to get freed from this. This is not your immortal thing. I like that you're just frowning at this idea. He's trying to make it up. I'm not yeah, saying but he's like, right is it wrong. a fish child? How is she going to... She's a fish now. How so is she she's having a, a child? And ah. she's saddled with a kid. Like, how Honestly, is Honestly, how is she going to take care of this child? <laughs> Yeah. She doesn't even have thongs. <laughs> she lives under yeah. water. Yeah. But interesting, so the Rishi magic can't be undone. Once. Rishi magic cannot be undone. And that's okay. something that we see kind that of interesting. in a lot yeah. of like this. And like this idea of making the wish in anger, cursing, and then like taking it back but cannot take it fully, that's something that kind of comes up mm-hmm. quite a bit. Mm. Interesting. Throughout this. So she turns into a fish. And kind of is a little bit of peace after being told that, okay, it's not all going to be bad. Um, but then eventually just kind of forgets and she's just a fish swimming around. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we'll move forward then. Forward a year. Okay, she's been a fish for a year. She's been a fish for a year. And now she's just a fish. Cause... And yep, yeah, and she's just a fish. <laughs> Doing fish things. Are we thinking like some kind of big, beautiful arowana sort of, or like a marlin? Oh, why not? A giant goldfish. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's got a big river. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, and then I believe this is the Yamuna River, which is an actual river in India. Okay. Yeah, my aunt was actually named Yamuna after after the river. Oh, so, cool. Um, yeah. So, a year later, we're going to pick up the story with a dude named Uparachala. And that's, I'm going to say, U-P-A-R-I-C-H-A-R-A. Uh, Opalachara. I do not know if I've got these pronunciations right. So this is a king who's favored by the god Indra, who is the king of the gods. Indra gives him what's called like a 
Vimana, Vimana, uh, which is like this crystal chariot mm -hmm. that can fly in the skies. Sweet. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah, I've tried looking if there's any kind of imagery on it, and I haven't seen... You know why? Why? Because it's crystal, and it's in the sky, and you can't see it. It's like the Wonder Woman Oh, plane. sure. It'd be... Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. the Wonder Woman plane. Mm -hmm. It's 100% that. It's the origin of that. Okay. It's the origin of the Wonder Woman plane. Oh. How did the Amazons get it? That's the real question. That's the question, yeah. <laughs> How'd they get it from <laughs> It crashed on their island. It's the finder's keepers. Yeah. <laughs> they yeah. modified it. I drew a part I was done with it. Like, they're yeah. like, yo, we'll take that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then they, like, took it apart and redesigned it into a flashy mm -hmm. new jet. Of course mm -hmm. they did. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. They're modern women. Yeah, totally. Timeless modern women. Timeless Absolutely. modern women. So he's cruising his chariot. So he's cruising his chariot <laughs> and just, you know, he's a king blessed by the gods. Um, and then he's married to a woman called Gilika. My mother's name is Gilija, so I don't know if there's a connection there. The other like thing that I'm about that's amazing about the Mahabharat, where like you just have to start at some places, like there's a story to give to Gilika as well. Mm -hmm. I think she herself is like the daughter of a river and a mountain, um, and then it goes back even further, like because. It's interesting is that the Mahabharat can still be placed like between and after like other stories within Hindu mythology. Interesting. So cool. the way that kind of weaves together is like fascinating. I'm like, all right, this is where I've decided to start. Where was I? So he's flying through the sky. Flying through the sky. Yeah. Yep. So anyway, one day, two things happen. One, it's the day that his he has to, to go and kill a red stag for his father's sacrifice. So he's about to go ahead and do that, and his wife, they've already got like five beautiful children, but his wife wants another kid, and this is the day she's ovulating. So she comes in all scantily clad, ready to do it, and he's like, I, I gotta go do this stuff for the ancestors. Like, I gotta do this for my dad. Ah! <laughs> so... You know, like he goes back and forth, and he's been saving himself Filling for this. Filling or sexing. Yeah. Oh, it's a tough one. It is tough. Two, two very different areas of manhood. <laughs> <laughs> well, right, yeah. So, what a decision. What a decision. And so he has to. He's like, I got to do this for the ancestors. I got to do it. Like maybe I'll be back. You know, stags. I, yeah, stags before. I'll wives. get. I'll and he get, had to do that right. that day. It had to happen that day. That's the. Okay. Yeah, it and just, it was gonna take all day. Like he couldn't kill the stag in the morning, and then come and maybe that's some sexy that's time a, that night. So he goes off. Okay. He's like, I'm gonna go get the all stag. Right. Right. Determined. I okay. hope I get back for this. Yeah, okay. you know. Okay. Um, <laughs> and he just can't kill the stags because he's too distracted. He's been <laughs> saving himself for this moment, and then his wife came in in the morning, and that's the only thing he sees. Oh no! So like she once taking care of business, and then went and killed the stag. He may not have been able to kill the stag. Oh, boy. So he would have been out of energy. It's Men get tired. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, again, that'll be coming up a little bit. So... I'll cut that out. Oh. You what? I'll cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't want, I don't want men to hate me. <laughs> I don't want to jump ahead, but I feel like we got some fish fucking coming up. <laughs> yeah, that's right. The fish, we haven't gotten the fish yet. Fish fucking, yes. Okay. So... So he's like, all right, I gotta like, I got too much pent up energy, man. I got, I gotta get rid of this energy, relax a little bit, chill out, get my stag, but also, like, what do I do? So, he jacks off into a banyan leaf. Seems mm -hmm. wasteful, but okay. Mm -hmm. Somehow, it's not wasteful because he folds it up very neatly and properly. Ooh, stop it. Such a yeah. gentleman. Yeah. Just, and like, I'm kind of, as a guy, I'm kind of impressed. Like, did, is it all of it? Like, did you get all of it on the leaf? <laughs> Such precision. That's fucking skill. Like, Amazing. This, no wonder this guy was blessed by Indra. You know? That's something mm -hmm. I've never like, seen before. The fact that you can do this shit is like, That's so, why he got the chariot. Yeah. That's how he got the chariot. Exactly. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Those ejaculating skills. <laughs> yeah. Like into a bunion leaf. Yeah, into what a bunion leaf. What does a bunion leaf. leaf look like? Big. Is it like 
I'm not really sure, but it sounds more personal. Not like a banana think. leaf. I don't think it's a banana leaf. But smaller? Yeah. Did he fold it into like a square? That's what I feel like. He That's fold, how I pictured it too. He folded it into a little packet. In all the different interpretations, I kind of interpreted that he also Gotta folded seal it that into up. a different packet. So, Maybe double leaf it. Double leaf it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wrapped it up with a bowl full of the vines. Just, what a gift to have. So is that for his wife? Or, like, what? Yeah. The, okay. So, when oh, he, and he casts a spell on it. He does a mantra. So okay. he casts a spell on it as well. Okay. Good. And then, there are two the versions. Either there's just a falcon that's looking and he calls the falcon, or it's his hunting falcon. So he calls upon his hunting falcon, gives the falcon the package, and it's like, go. Oh, I see what's happening. Take this to Gurkha. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. We gotta make this shit happen. So, <laughs> baby number six, let's yeah. go. So, so she has to do literally all the work. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. The Falcon was gonna help out somehow. I don't. I don't know. Mm. I don't know oh, where that's we're going here. Yeah. So, <laughs> please do tell. He gets on with his day. I don't. I assume he gets the stags. The story that I've read doesn't really follow the stag part because we're more interested in, you know, the journey of the jizz. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so. <laughs> Let's hope so. Let's yeah. hope so. Yeah. I mean, because otherwise this whole production was, you know, pointless. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I also like... Assume was like, there's a dead stag and ancestors, yeah. you know. I don't really care yeah. about the stags. Like, this is the story. Like, the jazz jump to our story. <laughs> Falcon's carrying it. Eagle spots the falcon. Uh-oh. And assumes it's a piece of meat. Well, mm-hmm. sure. So... I mean, but it smells like. Well, I mean, it's carrying something, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right. The smell, yep. the smell yep. alone. Yeah. Would, like, there's, there's something juicy there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. so eagle, you know, races after. There's a battle in the skies. I can imagine this like leaf of jizz is just bopping mm-hmm. around Must them. Must have double leafed it. Yeah. To keep it. To together. keep it that at package. At this point, this aerial battle. Yeah, I mean, if this isn't specified this in the story, but I gotta wonder there too. It is good, right? <laughs> yeah. I gotta wonder if he double leafed it, like, like you say, like if Had there to. were two leaves. Yeah. But it falls down, Uh-oh. you know, into the Yamuna River. <gasps> yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Yep. And then, you know, Adrika was after the last Rishi's um, goodness. Mm-hmm. And this, even though, like, she's a fish now, mm-hmm. she's, you know, like something is calling her towards the cum. So. Uh... <laughs> got this wonderful song in her head and she goes and she yep it kind of drips into the river and she manages to get all of it gobbled it up and wow. becomes pregnant mm-hmm. there's a lot of biological stuff i don't understand That's about not... that particular process is that where mermaids came from oh my god like, is this the origin story of mermaids seriously is it because that would make sense half man Maybe. Okay. Sure, a version of mermaids. Well, okay. okay. As long as we're not looking, well, we're not looking at the fish tails. Okay. The, no, yeah, we as we be. kind of go on. Okay. But we would be. So. Okay. This then is not no. the origin of the mermaids. This is then. not an origin of mermaids. It's an origin of some of people, though. Okay. Please yeah. do continue. So. I need to know. <laughs> fish gets pregnant. Obviously. And like after ten that's months, how that works. that's apparently how that works. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And Science. after ten months. Ten is, months. Yeah, ten months is just huge, kind That's... of like resting on the top of the water at this point. Wow. Um, she must have been a big fish. Big fish. To begin uh, with. Ah, uh, no. I don't think she was big to begin with. Oh my god. I think she just kind of grew. This is kind of disturbing. Yeah? We're getting into body horror now. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We are getting into body horror. Because... Okay, go on. Please continue. Yeah. I, it's all in my head now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm envisioning this. So the fish is caught by a fisherman. Wait, so she's just bobbing at the front, at the top? But it's, she's like human The description now? is that she's so big that like she can't get through anything. So she's actually easily caught by oh a fisherman. Oh, God. Right time, right place. All she's... for just wanting a little reach action. I know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just a little tease. Guts the fish, and there's like this oh. flash. 
Okay. This flash of light as the Upsa spirit leaves. Uh, what is very prominent also in the Mahabharata is like everything is cyclical. There's so many people in this who reincarnate into different things. So we can kind of assume that the Upsa Adjika goes on to new new so endeavors. So it's a spirit that left, not yeah. an actual baby? No. So the spirit leaves okay. once the fish is killed, mm -hmm. but inside the fish... Is a boy and a girl. Oh, twins! Whoa! I didn't see that Wait, coming. So the spirit was the was the nymph was the water. Nymph. The spirit was the water. Got nymph. it. Good. Yeah. So her okay. Is over. She's gone. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. I love that. She's not a fish anymore. Yeah. She can go nymph off somewhere. And live her best exactly. life. Exactly. <sighs> and she doesn't have to raise these kids. And she doesn't have to raise the kids. All right. Listen. This is turning out better than I thought it would. <laughs> Old woman in the coral just... with their with their kids. Yeah, it would suck for like a, a spirit, especially like this was oh, not yeah. what they. This is not mortality. No, no, it takes all the fun out of so many things. Absolutely. But no, spirit's on its way, and okay. now we have two fish. Somehow the king, Prashara, gets word of this. Like somehow he has about. And is able to deduce what happened. Is able to deduce that these are basically his kids somehow um, eaten by the fish. Uh, blessed by Indra, he's just going to assume and it is the truth. So He's like, that's where that jizz went. I that's wondered. where the jizz went. It, it never made it home. Never okay. made it home. Yeah. My wife's going to be pissed. <laughs> so, yeah, well, she was pissed, I assume, for like 10 months. That's how long the, you know, the fish was oh, pregnant yeah. for. Mm -hmm. When, like, the fisherman meets with the king and they talk it to him figure it out he's like i you know like let me keep one and for him like his wife still wanted a son the fisherman no the king oh sorry so the king's wife still wants a son okay um and so they take one of the kids the boy well, they separated as the son Ooh. and as at birth as kids mm -hmm. they don't really know each other and then the woman becomes yeah stays with the fisherman i've got a luke and leia situation mm -hmm. going on now okay Ooh. Oh no. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe beyond the story that oh, I know anyway. Shit, okay. So, as far as your the mermaid ask uh questions and hopes and dreams that you both had, mm -hmm. I'm assuming it's the same with the boy. We're gonna follow the story of the girl who smells like fish. <gasps> oh no. Yep. Smells like fish. Her father oh, also baby. is Yeah. But she's she's in a fisherman family. She's in a fisherman family. So they all smell can she kind of blend in? I think a little bit so, but there's definitely, like, I mean, clearly they don't mind. It's their lifestyle, I imagine, mm -hmm. right? Like, mm -hmm. they fish for a living. Mm -hmm. They're also known yeah. as the Nishana, um, who are, like, the forest people. So I assume from that, yeah, they're very familiar with different smells. Yeah, it's, you know, nobody asked for it. Yeah. But, like, there's a happy ending. So. Does she what have any it? other fish characteristics? Like a certain sheen in oh, sunlight. I know that she has like large eyes. Those are vampires. <laughs> <laughs> no, those are Twilight people. Yeah. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> they like scales, right? Does she have scars that look like oh, that yeah. look like gills? Someone needs to do artwork of these people. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah. I'm going to do this. <clears throat> yeah, but I want to see those. I want to know. Does her, do her eyes are her eyes just a little buggy? I think her eyes are described in one of the texts <gasps> I read, like, just a little bit. So there's some, like, eyes are buggy and she elements like fish. a little bit. Yeah. I feel so bad for her. She's not going to succeed at life. No. She does pretty know. well. Oh, that's okay. a spoiler. She does okay. really spoiler. well, actually. No, I You just... said it was a happy ending. Where I'm just assuming that yeah. people are mean to her, I didn't but even... I will just stop yeah. assuming and let and you I... tell the story. Sure, and I didn't want that to be a metaphor about the whole gist stuff, but, you know, that's what, what? we were... I don't get ending. it. I don't get right. the metaphor. I... You like that Do one you get out. the benefit? The happy ending. Oh, oh that happy ending. Mm -hmm. My apologies. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. Okay, so we're following, okay. we're following the girl. Where were we? We okay. don't care about the king. So stuff. she's the fisherman. Fisherman's daughter. And see, so that's actually the end of that particular story. Later on in her life, uh, there's another sage. This guy's name is Palushala P A R. U S H A R A. So another one of, I believe, one of the immortal Rishi wizard people. 
and he wants to cross the Yamuna. He wants to cross the river, and he's kind of pissed for some whatever reason. We don't know why. At least I don't know why. But he kind of comes and is like, "Get me on, get me over the fucking river." Um, the the father, the fisherman father, he's he had talked to like other people beforehand about his daughter and knew that there were great things in store for her. So he has an instinct. He doesn't know why, but he has an instinct about this moment, even though the guy's being a real kind of dick. And he just says, Machiraja, like, go ahead, take him over the river. So she goes in to take him over the river. So again, this is another one of the immortal sages. This is a person who has been celibate, assumingly for all his life, and has from that become a wizard as part of his powers. Like, remember that the last one we learned, listened to, like, he rejected, like, a water spirit. Like, mm -hmm. fairy creatures. This one as well, he's been to, like, the three different worlds that are part of the Mahabharat and always been celibate. Just... But this Keeping girl... No wonder he's cranky. Yeah. But this girl smells really good to him. Ooh. Really good to him. That's and maybe we brush a little bit past the idea that she's 16... And he's an immortal. Because I guess if he's immortal, he's still young, right? Nope. No? Nope. Not, not how, how it works. works? Okay. <laughs> nope. You probably don't feel like she did then. 16 isn't <clears throat> terrible. It depends on the country. Yeah. <laughs> no, and it the, doesn't. And the times, maybe. And the she consent. She was probably yeah, middle-aged at the time. Oh, 16 is totally middle-aged. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's just hard Actually, to say. she should have had four kids by now. Yeah. You have people in the story that live for, like, hundreds of years, and mm -hmm. so, like, I don't know what is young, middle-aged, and for mortal people. In any case, he sees her and is just, oh, fuck, like, this hasn't happened for me before. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of excited here. Mm -hmm. And they row off together over the Yamuna River alone. I believe it's during the day. Mm -hmm. He starts making his move. He's like, Does he know how to make a move? Yeah, that's an excellent question. He what is, is a his move? Powerful wizard. He uh -huh. knows everything. He just hasn't practiced it before. Oh, I know those men. Yeah. And they're not good yeah. at this. <laughs> point. Solid point. <laughs> but she, she's book smart. Yeah. But she hasn't either. So <laughs> That's true. That's true. You know. That's she doesn't fine. have that experience either. So he starts making his move on her and is like, like, and he, and she's just, she needs convincing, basically. She's kind of feeling it. She's like, wow, this dude is, he's, he's old and stuff and still, I'm kind of wanting him too. But mm -hmm. she resists. She's like, we cannot, like, a couple things. Like, first of all, like, I'm, you're a Brahmacharya. You're a, you know, you're a fucking, like, wizard person. Like, I'm just a lowly, lowly nymph. Like, not, sorry, a lowly, like, Nishada. For the forest people. You know, like, and obviously she's got this history that she's not kind of considering here of, like, who she is and whose kid she is. But she's like, like, this this can't really happen, can it? And he's like, no, it's fine. You know, everything will be great. Um, uh, so that's the flat. The consent part is, a, <laughs> is starting to worry me. He wants the consent. He absolutely he's wants asking. the consent. Yes. Okay. He is asking. <laughs> this is why I like... <laughs> Depending on the perspective you read as far as, like, how much she wants it. The version I read, but, you know, maybe translated by a guy, she was interested. And... Okay. But she says, so two things. Like, one that... And then the other two things here is that, one, it's like, it's during the day. Like, we, you've read the Holy Vedas. You've read these ancient texts. We can't fuck during the day. Is it forbidden? That's a thing? It is a thing. So oh. this is one of the points I researched later. Oh. Like, oh, it, it is a thing. So, okay, yeah. okay. All right. It so is... not only are they like a million years apart in age, yes. but like Probably it's literally. also like super tabby. It's also daytime. It's sunny. Yeah. yeah. And it's I just... mean, if she is 16, she's horny as hell. So yeah. 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 She's she's really resistant. This is like yeah. checking all her boxes. And part of this is also yeah. like, like there is, I think, the idea of this, which we'll get into, is like it's just, it's just not going to be good. Like whatever happens is not going to be as good if we're not... Doing this in the dark. Also, also, my fucking father's like right there, mm -hmm. like watching us and wondering mm -hmm. why the boat has stopped. He's not a real father. Yeah, but she still doesn't want to be fucking in front of I him. I know, I'm, I'm, I know. That's you true. know, <laughs> that's <laughs> that was fair. hurtful. That's fair. Yeah, that's fair. So he, 
being the wizard that he is, casts uh, casts a little winter snowstorm, like just over them to hide them. Mm, sexy. That, yeah. There's like snow falling now. There's now snow falling. Romantic on a river. Snow? Yeah. Oh my. That kind of shadows them so they're now in darkness. Oh hell yeah! Sh- that shirt's no? coming off. Hello, listeners. Our guest today is Mindy Mejia. Mindy is a New York Times best-selling mystery writer. Her latest available book, To Catch a Storm, is about Eve Roth, an atmospheric scientist living in Iowa whose husband has gone missing with her as the number one suspect. To find her husband and prove her innocence, Eve reluctantly teams up with Jonah Kendrick, an unbalanced psychic detective who claims to have an idea of where Eve's husband is being held. You can find out more about this and other exciting books that Mindy has written through her website, www.mindymejia.com. That is M-I-N-D-Y-M-E-J-I-A dot com. Check it out and immerse yourself in a number of pulse-pounding stories. So, that's this, impressive. <laughs> yeah, second base at least. She's least getting like, base. you know, yeah. I, I would think, right? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. magic mm-hmm. powers apparently a turn yeah. on. Yeah. For sure. Magic powers oh, are a yeah. turn on. Still is like, ah, uh, what's going on? Like, finally she's like, no, where am I? There's the a middle? snowstorm in the middle There's of the river. Storm. And someone's going to get to second base. Yes. That's where you are. So she <laughs> says that. In my opinion. She still kind of resists him, and then he casts another spell on her oh, to make her more beautiful. Oh, what? Yeah. So, like, this is how I see you. Makes her more beautiful. And then she's got all these other smells going on, too. Um, whatever romantic smells are. I forget what they are. Strawberries? But the really cool thing is... <laughs> Maybe strawberries? <laughs> I don't think strawberries was mentioned. More perfumey. Okay. Uh, perfumey. Okay. In my entire reading of the Mahabharata, I have not seen much mention of strawberries. Would, so he's trying so, to seduce her, and he makes her more beautiful. Yeah. Not like him. Not himself. Interesting move. Yeah. This is strange. So he makes her more beautiful. Move. And she's... Your choices. Yeah. Okay. And she's kind of feeling it. And the thing is, like, all these new smells also seemingly work really well with the fish smell. That I was just wondering. So, like, lemon? Garlic? Some vinegar? (laughs) (laughs) I put a little chili in there. (laughs) For sure. I don't, yeah. yeah. So, maybe lemon and garlic. It's not lemon and garlic, but we'll go with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. (laughs) Garam masala? That sounds delicious. I would think. <laughs> it's not um, dinner time at all. <laughs> so she gets kind of a whiff of herself and she's like, okay, this is this is pretty fucking fantastic. Wow. Makes final terms with him. I love this. Makes final terms. Let me read the terms because I had those ones. So with this magic that can't be undone, right? So does that mean it's always going to be snowing in this part of the river and she's always going to look like this? It's more like the undone stuff that can't be undone is usually when it's like a promise, like a vow. Like, oh, okay. Or like, like a curse. Or a curse. This is more okay. like a glamour kind yeah. of. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Just a, a wave of the yeah. wand. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so... Her terms. Does he have a wand? No. Okay. No. Wave of a hand. Yeah, wave of a hand. Okay. Yes. So, his son though. Okay, so, here are her terms. If my father or anyone else comes to know that this is happening, I'm good. And, you know, I always have struggled to struggle with this one. If my virginity is not broken, I mm. guess that really depends on how you define virginity. And then, I think we know what she means. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You can probably guess. Like physically, mm-hmm. if it's not broken. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's what she's hoping yes. for. So you're going to have to restore that. And then if the son born of our love is a magician like you, and that I'm always going to smell like this, because this is fucking A. So he's like, yeah, done. And he says that she's going to be known as, she's going to have such a great name, um, known as Satyavati, S-A-T-Y-A-V-A-T-I, and part of her, like, as she's known, is because of this story that's going to follow. So, she's like, all right, let's do this. They kind of move off to an island, have a fantastic night together. Wow. Mm-hmm. Is it still snowing on the island? The snowing, yes, absolutely. Yeah, 
It has to be. Otherwise, it's just not appropriate. Does it melt as soon as it hits the ground? I would assume. Yes, I love this. Yeah. Okay. All the romance you kind of want in this part of the story, or not, between this young immortal and young girl. Old immortal. It's yeah. just an old immortal. Let's just, let's just all just yeah. get comfortable no with really, it. Mm-hmm. There's no getting around mm-hmm. it. No. So, yeah. yep. she gave her consent, right? So She yeah. did. In writing, it seems. Yeah, with, with detailed oh, terms. I'm terms. impressed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm impressed with yeah. the negotiation I think skills. it's fine. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. She Good. clearly had agency here. Yes. Yep. Yeah. 100%. She clearly has agency here. Absolutely. <laughs> so she, so anyway, next day he gives her a kiss on the forehead and goes on his way. Great. Everyone's happy. Everyone's happy. She is immediately pregnant. Mm-hmm. Is immediately at term. Oh. Oh, that just does happen in Twilight, right? <laughs> what is we are going Why down the Twilight road so now? So many yeah. references yep. to Twilight. To Twilight. Oh, I would... We gotta look into this. And I may have to watch the movie properly now. No, I don't. No, think it's show. fine. No. We'll, just, put, like, we'll uh, just go to the parts that are um, that that make. As part of like Mah- to become like an expert on Mahabharat, I don't have to watch Twilight now. Nope. Okay. Uh, no, you're okay. fine. Okay. Good. No. We've already hit the highlights. Okay. Yeah. So here's what else happens. That's fascinating, though. A kid it is really born. Is. <laughs> Okay. Let me yeah. Let me know how much of this matches up. Kid is born. Yeah. Kid ages immediately. Yeah. <gasps> yes. What? <laughs> wow. Does he name awesome. it a terrible name? No. Okay. It's a good name. That's good because that the name, name changes is actually. Is it the worst what is the name CGI of the twilight? Ever? Is it the worst CGI, <laughs> CGI ever? <maybe. laughs> What is this the is baby, crazy. What is the baby's name in Twilight? It's like reverse. What is Ro- it? Uh, it's it's the reverse of something. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Es, like Esme or something like that. Renesme. Renesme. Oh, yes. Terrible. Renesme. It's a bad name. It's not in there. It's a bad name. It's a terrible name. Okay. It's really bad. He grows up to be basically as old as his dad, and he's like, "All right, I'm moving on too." Wait, so he immediately grows to be the age, the age of the... I'm air quoting. You can't tell that, but I'm yeah. air quoting. Age of the immortal man. He becomes an old man. It, what is the space of time here? Like a day? No, I think minutes. minutes. What? Yeah, minutes. So this is the all morning after shit. Oh yeah. my god, there uh-huh. wasn't even time to go so to the all, pharmacy. So all the promises basically have basically... Like no one's going to know she had a kid because the kid is now older than she is. Mm-hmm. Um, older probably than her father is. Wait, so did the immortal guy look old? Because now you're saying he looked old. Yeah, he become he ages very quickly in that moment into an old fellow, still immortal. Right. Um, but I assume he yeah, but he ages into an old guy. Huh. Uh, so the theme I'm picking up so far is stress free motherhood. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. So far, just, you know, fish gutted, she's out of there. Yeah. And mm. baby's all grown up in a minute. Yeah. And you know. <clears throat> Yeah, absolutely. Send him on his way. Unless she totally. like wanted to be a mother, but I kind of doubt she did at this point. She just wanted a nice night in the no, sack. No, she's only yeah, 16. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't feel like she would have any no. bonds here. No. Yeah, she just gets to smell great. This is great. Yeah. 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 This is great for all women so far. I think so. Uh, what were you worried, worried about? I'm loving this. <laughs> Uh-oh. I don't know if I was worried so much. I think, no, it was like I just all the... I was very excited for all the semen talk. And I love alliterations as well. Yeah, for sure. You know, and like that's, and that's just such a theme of this. It's like in many ways, this is the story of like semen this is coming the story together. of semen. Yeah, for um, sure. Okay, so. Yeah, her delivery was miraculous and painless. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. As soon, yeah, as soon as he was born, he was handsome and he becomes a full grown Vichy like his dad. Self sufficient. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is great. He's got and, a pension. He's got a pension. Yeah. <laughs> he's going to keep the same lifestyle. And he's, I guess yeah. he does have a staff that he's got. Where did he get the staff? It just kind of happened. Well, he's on an island, so he probably, maybe he just like I wheeled think it, it was, to him. Maybe, yeah. I think it just kind of appears. It appears, okay. Yeah. That's fine. Mm-hmm. Man of tawny hair. And he just says, all right, I got to go my way, you got to go yours. He can already speak perfect. What oh, yeah, he's a speaking? wise man. Amazing. And he's just like, if you need me, just call me in your mind and I'll be there. But otherwise, I'm going to go do like Rishi stuff. 
So does the dad ever come back? Or is this like him reincarnating himself somehow? I, no, I think it's a different person. Okay. Yeah. It, because the dad, yeah, the dad leaves. This is just his son. Interesting. Um, huh. Also magical. And so so this guy, so his name is Dwaipayana. It gets a little easier. D-W-A-I-P-A-Y-A-N-A. He is the one who composes the Mahabharat. Oh. So, he, so this kid? This kid. This kid, no, sage, Rishi, is the author of the, of Mahabharat. the Mahabharat. So okay. he, he does some other work with the Vedas, which are other cool. ancient texts. Mm-hmm. And so he is immortal. And what actually happens is a great span of time takes place, which is where the events of the Mahabharat all happen. And he's comes and goes within this great story as well as a visitor in it. But all of the events happen. Everyone who was in the story, all the characters born and die, he's immortal. And so he, to one of the descendants of the Kuru clan, makes his, decides that it's time for him to tell the story. He calls upon the god Brahma, uh, one of the trinity in Hinduism, and says, I have the story to tell. It's long. It's a hundred thousand couplets. Mm. I'm like, I, I can't do, I can't write it down. Like I can tell it to you or I can tell someone I can't write it down. Like what, what do I do? So Brahma recommends he call upon Ganesha. Mm-hmm. Ganesha, elephant headed god in Hinduism. I have a couple over here. Mm-hmm. Very revered. And this is again what he's kind of like for me. This is what he's most known for. Uh, Ganesha comes and he hears uh, Vyasa's idea and plea. And he's like, I have this great, magnificent story to tell. It's very long. It's epic. It'll change the world. It's got all this wisdom hidden into it. Um, I need someone to read it to, to write it down. Ganesha agrees to be the one to scribe it. But he does have terms. He does say, I, I'll do this, but once you start telling the story, you don't stop. You just oh, go wow. zero to a hundred thousand on these couplets. And I'll write it down. Like no sleeping, no eating, or... I don't think so. Wow. Yeah, that's I mean, how I interpret it. I believe it all happens once. Yes, being he... a Rishi, he has all these magic He's... powers... No, but does he sleep and eat anyways? Oh, that's does he question. do that? I. Does he need to? Does he I do would it for say, fun? I would say he doesn't need to. Okay. That's my guess. He can, but he doesn't need to. Yeah. I say because he could go to a party. He could take a nap if he wanted to. Sure. I just like to know what yeah. I'm dealing with. I don't know. <laughs> but my assumption is this is the quote. This is the request. Okay. And so. Is. Is this story based off of knowledge that he has gained or that he just knows? Like, did he experience the, the story? He actually comes in and out of the story itself. So he's witnessed it. He's witnessed he's it. He's witnessed we'll the story. We'll say that he is the witness of this great story. Okay. Um, but he's like, that, in his mind, I imagine, like that, that's a tall fucking order. Like, I'm not a god. You're a god to be able to stop and... Like, not to be able to stop. So he makes a counter-proposal to Ganesha. He's like, okay, I will write down, or I will continue to tell the story, but you have to understand everything being written. Okay. And in that way, he kind of tempers a bit of a way to, like, kind of pause. If Ganesha has to take time to understand something, that gives him a little bit of a break to gather his thoughts. This is also, like, one reason why it might be so long as some theorists did. It's like, well, he goes off on tangents. Okay. And the tangents give him a little bit more time. So that's one of the reasons that this epic is just so big, is that he just keeps kind of doing, like, Shelizard style, going in different directions before coming back. That's essentially how the first version of this is told, and there's a point where Ganesha is furiously writing and his pen breaks but Vyasa is still talking and so Ganesha will break off one of his tusks and then he will use that tusk to write 
and you'll see some pictures of Ganesha, I'm not thinking if I have any here, where one of the tusks is broken. Interesting. And it does specify which tusk, I'm forgetting at the moment if it is the left or the right, but it does specify like which tusk he breaks. And so in many images when you see, like it's almost like, for me, it's like it's a before and after. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. like, oh, he's got both his tusks. That before he got the Mahabharata. Right. Mm-hmm. I hope you're enjoying the podcast. Aside from being a podcaster, I am also a mythic fantasy writer. My latest novella is Legacy of the Crow. It is the first in a five-part globe-spanning adventure. In Legacy of the Crow, Kalisha Jail is a crow sorceress who was once the god of crows. She has given up her godhood to enter and destroy a totalitarian nation from within. In order to succeed, Kalisha must use her magic, her wits, her crow allies, and a damning level of secrecy, while also protecting her sanity from the horrific evils around her. This book explores the Kilak people of the world of Adajari, people whose magic comes from their bond with animals. This book is appropriate for young adults, but does include some animal cruelty and mature content. You can find out more about Legacy of the Crow from my website, spjaraj.com that is s p j a y a r a j.com you can order it from your favorite bookstore or find a digital version of it on all the major ebook platforms go get your copy now so as far as like your question about where the story kind of like what the origin is i was just reading in one of my other texts today how he told it to ganesha who wrote it who wrote it down um and then there were just all these other pathways of how the story kind of got heard and overheard and then kind of compiled compiled there's this lovely like what i love about like hindu mythology that i read in the book is the tree roots of hindu mythology are not like all one root it's those tree roots that kind of spread everywhere mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's all these stories that have kind of come together to form the root and then the trunk. Mm -hmm. And especially when you're looking at like the timeline of this story and how, again, it's an oral tradition, it makes sense that this is, it has so many different origin stories. And even Hinduism itself has like five different origin stories. So for the Mahabharata to, to kind of adopt that as well, and it's got all these other versions of as well in other religions and other traditions. So, yeah, so the origin, like, that's the, the the official story. And then it's passed on to another king, and then he will tell it to his disciple, and his disciple will tell it to a king, mm-hmm. and then so on and so forth. That's, yeah, that's as far as I was going to go today. Wow, yeah. Um, my thing with the Mahabharata is, like, so that's the story that my grandfather told me, the Ganesha and Vyasa story. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so that's all I knew about how it was written. And so I'm really happy that... And he told you that full origin story. He he told me the the story of that conversation, Vyasa, the sage, and Ganesha. Okay. Yeah, okay. He, we, he didn't really do the semen story He stuff. skipped the, like, seducing a 16-year-old and then... Yeah, we didn't get into Vyasa origin. We got yeah, into, yeah, yeah. like, Vyasa, the sage, Ganesha. Got it. Okay. Okay, yeah. cool, fair. But I, that makes sense. Yeah, and but I wanted to get into the earlier stuff because, damn, that was fun. That's fascinating. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I love That's that. Cool. So, yeah, what do you think? What do you want to chat about? I did, like I said, do a little, like, I. what's nice about this for me is that, you know, I'm thinking about Ganesha and Vyasa and how this demand that Ganesha, that Vyasa, you have to understand everything I've written. And so what I'm kind of learning from this is that I went ahead and did some research on certain things after this. I'm like, all right, let me confirm and see what we're looking at here. And part of that was uh, the power of semen and Mm -hmm. the idea of celibacy. And then also the, oh yeah, and then the fucking during the day. Interesting. It's not like a thing. So interesting. So, Mm -hmm. and those are things that I did see. I've got a couple. I did did some soft core research. (laughs) into the subject. <laughs> this is not the whole Mahabharata, it's just the beginning. Wow. But I did some and it was <laughs> it was interesting. Um, there's an aspect of like 
for the for the day and the night thing about how there's certain energies that are just at a high at that point and so it just won't be as efficient it matches there's talk as well of like when during like the year is better and generally apparently during winter is better mm-hmm. the interesting thing about the so the celibacy aspect is that the idea is and in the videos i watch they they're saying that there's some scientific backup as well i do trust these kind of sources too but the idea is that if the semen will kind of get reabsorbed into the body and it enhances all the other aspects of like focus that was like a whole list but physical ability focus energy during the day all of it apparently you get more attractive which explains why a 16 year old was into a 100 year old maybe maybe um, maybe yeah and Seinfeld anyone <laughs> oh, which episode? Do you remember the Seinfeld episode? No, I don't. The bet? The bet. Yes. <laughs> How did that... Did the George language? became extremely smart, very yes. successful at work. Mm-hmm. Because of the reabsorption. Because of the, the reabsorption. And mm-hmm. it made him more handsome. Mm-hmm. And Elaine, of course, became a dullard and an idiot. <laughs> she was, could not function. Was Elaine the first to... To lose the bet? She was, yes. Because yes. oh. she went into what, JFK Jr. or something. Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> <Jim>. <laughs> something like that. <laughs> it is amazing how these, but these little snippets from, uh-huh. from mythology or religion or whatever you want to call yeah. it mm-hmm. come into like our everyday lives. Yeah. And they just kind of float amongst us in the ether. It's yeah. interesting. There's semen everywhere, apparently. Mm-hmm. Yeah, semen is just floating it's everywhere. Being reabsorbed right and left. <laughs> Ish. What do you guys think? I think it's fantastic. Yeah, that's a great story. I'm, I'm in. I can't wait to hear more. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, as a writer, as a storyteller, how was this story for you? It was, I mean, it was a wild ride. I loved it. I I really enjoyed the the theme of stress free motherhood, and um, the jizz journeys. Yeah, That's, I think what it boils down to, right? Yeah, and I mean, sure, like the, or jizz, the lack it's, of journeys. It's so <laughs> both Staying like put. the ability of like yeah. I mean, there's apparently something in the story that's just holding it in for years, apparently. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. And, you know, as the origin of this whole thing is, like, where we're starting with it, like, well, that, that does make the magic sense that we do that. Mm-hmm. Um, the, and even if you look at it, like, metaphorically, the jizz journey, the idea that there are all these other animals involved. Yes. You know? Mm-hmm. The bestiality like, was, yeah. uh, was refreshing. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a different take. Yeah. 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 But, like, honestly, the only... Beast, I'm air quoting again. Bestiality there was. The was fish. the fish? The fish was the instigator. But there wasn't. Yeah, yeah. It, but that there wasn't. But there was no physical altercation. It's true. Yeah. yeah or it's true. It, even an altercation, interaction. Yeah. yeah, that's a stretch. It was just a insemination. Gobble gobble gobble. The gobble, fish gobble, was gobble. not originally a fish. True. So the there's fish that. did not. Yeah. So the, yeah. So, yeah. it's not really bestiality. There's a lot of talk of beasts. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of... I want to know if he got that stag. I know you don't care, but I, I'm a completionist. <laughs> I want to know if he got it or not. I assume so. I assume he was able to honor his father. Assuming. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. I'll look it up for next time. Thank you. I need to know. Okay. All right. Great. Cool. This was fun. This is really fun. This was fun. This was very, okay. very fun. <laughs> I'm really excited. What a great All idea. Right. I can finally move on in my mind from the jizz journey. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm also impressed that they, like, understood ovulation. Like, you know? Like, mm-hmm. that's that's amazing. It's pretty advanced. Well, like, the role of women in this story is very interesting. It's, and I find, like, really cool. It's just a lot about this that we'll get into kind of gradually. Um, but a lot of, like, the bloodline even happens through women more than the men which I especially like once it gets into like the main characters and who like yeah their lineage mm-hmm. and 
yeah, there's there's some interesting things. There's some definitely things that kind of switch the dynamic up. I like it. Um, from like cool. what we know, but then also just even from like Indian culture stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, what? Well, you've got that interesting power dynamic between like the telling of the story and this, you know, inscribing of the story too, where like they're kind of locked into it together. Yeah. You know, with the the deal that was made. So mm-hmm. like. It's very, it's very even balance of power. Yeah, there. and it's still like a conversation, in that respect. Like for one to be able mm-hmm. to understand it, um, I see that as like a kind of a conversation still. Yeah, we can maybe hold this question for next time. But why wouldn't a god be able to understand what this Rishi was telling him? That's a good question. Like, why would he need a moment to understand? He should just yeah. be able to understand. He's a god. Yeah. Right, but the Rishi, I think, so that was, you know, even as a kid, I found that fascinating, that, that part, the part, the part that this man was able to kind of put a demand on the god. Mm-hmm. Like, is this um, god fallible then? If he can, if he doesn't understand everything? Mm-hmm. Well, he does. It just takes him, like, you know, the more to... Oh, you mean not, like, immediately? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's also the other thing about... It's a about, big question. It's a big question. But the <laughs> other thing I love about that, it's still that it's even... It can even be that conversation between, like, a writer and editor. It's like, I don't get this. Mm-hmm. Sure. Give me more details. Right, right. Sure. Give me more about this. Sure. Um, so that we can get to the essence here. Yeah, yeah. get to yeah. the essence. Yeah. And so, like, mm-hmm. that idea is also kind of, to me, is part of this, is, like, why they... Oh, we both get kind of the credit for that. Okay. Hey, buddy. Um, that's, that's an interesting way to phrase it, mm-hmm. like as an author and editor. Yeah. And like, even like, I've, like the, the interpretations are also like, did he beg him to do it? Was it just an agreement they came to? And that's where I think it comes down to, in many ways, just, you know, how you read the story and how individuals will mm-hmm. kind of relate to the story. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm sure it has something to do with like, whether you believe it as a, like a religious mm-hmm. aspect or a non-religious aspect yeah. or, you know, right. Right. somewhere in the yes. middle. Like, yeah. Yeah. I like the writer editor <clears throat> because I'm not a religious, yeah. I'm not of the religious thought, but if you are of the religious thought, then, okay, there's a cat on the microphone, then, um, <laughs> <laughs> oh buddy, wow. Then really you could think more on, um, how how that relates. Anyway, I'm distracted by the cat now. So. Mm-hmm. Me too. I was okay. interested too in why Ganesha was like willing to do this in the first place. Like, why is he interested? Mm-hmm. What doesn't he have anything else going on? I think that was like the way I interpreted. Oh, it was like that's why he was like, if I'm doing this, I'm doing this all at once. Like that's why would you know I'm yeah I'm doing this all at once. You can you got to start. This is all we're going to be doing. No breaks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's how, like, I one reason I interpreted that is, like... <clears throat> yeah. The other thing is... It was totally worth it. Um, <clears throat> Vyasa made this promise that this would be something that has all this elements of wisdom and be... And, like, the thing is about the Mahabharata is it is so integrated into Indian culture. Mm-hmm. Beyond even Hindu culture, which it is absolutely a part of... Um, but also, like, even beyond that, just, like, Indian culture, the Mahabharata, so, so much a part of it. And when it's connected as well to, to yogic sciences, to Ayurveda, um, and that's, like, reading this first section, I'm like, oh, man, we're already getting into, like, you know, like, the whole semen thing, but then also, like, the, like, when you have sex is apparently a thing. Mm -hmm. Um, I have, like, I'm also, like, I'm increasingly becoming more interested in, Invested in just Ayurveda. Do you, are you familiar with Ayurveda? As I've said it like three times. Yes, a, a bit. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, you know, like basically ancient Indian like kind of understanding of the body. Mm-hmm. And medicine. and Yeah, yeah. yeah. medicine. Mm-hmm. And it's all like connected as far as like yoga and meditations and Ayurveda. Like they're all basically one philosophy. Yeah, it's a philosophy <laughs> really. Yeah. So mm-hmm. to see this story kind of embody some of those ideas and bring some of those up. Mm-hmm. Um and then as I do the research and it's like, oh, okay, there's some scientific basis to some of the things you're saying. And again, the fact that I'm, I really have like done some things for myself that have benefited from doing Ayurveda and understanding it for myself. And yeah. So 
for all those reasons and like to bring that this great epic into the world mm-hmm. um, and again like it's one of the main things that he's known for the fact that he broke off a tusk um he oh, sacrificed part of himself mm-hmm. for this. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A yeah. god sacrificed a part of himself mm-hmm. which, to write this story. Which is just, I don't know, it, it, it's symbolic of how important it is yeah. to mm-hmm. the whole underlying culture. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Amazing. that to me is like, yeah. I can't wait to hear more. Me too. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, All thank right. you. Thank you for sharing the story. Yes, yeah, thank I'm, you. I'm excited to keep coming, going. Joining and, us. Yeah, I'm glad you guys were entertained. Oh, yeah. You know, I want. I just want to know the story, and this is the way I want to do it. This is awesome. This mm-hmm. is great. All right. Cool. Have an imaginative day. Thank you for listening to this episode of Not Your Mother's Mahabharat. Please like and subscribe to the podcast so that you don't miss our next episode. My name is Satish Jaraj, and I am your storyteller and researcher. My wife and co-host is Azure Anderson. Azure also wrote the theme music, she did all the editing and producing, and essentially did all the work to get this podcast to you. Without her, it would just be me swearing ancient stories to friends in our living room. Join us next time for the next installment of Not Your Mother's Mahabharat, and have an imaginative day.